Okay, so many of you um, will know me in a professional capacity, um, but I'm actually here today to share my personal story. As a psychologist, an academic, a researcher, and a public educator working in the ageing sector, I knew that there were issues in some nursing homes and hospitals um, in Ireland. And like most of you here, I had attended conferences where people spoke about chemical restraints, denial of dignity and violation of human rights. And I'd often heard, for example, that older adults went into hospital continent and came out of hospital incontinent. And as someone whose guiding principles are human rights and equality, I was horrified to think that those things happen in Ireland. But nothing, nothing prepares you for, for when they happen to your own mum. I can tell you um, from my two and a half year journey with my mum that we should be ashamed, utterly ashamed, by how we treat older adults in Ireland and by how we treat older adults living with dementia specifically. I'm going to share some moments with you from my journey and I warn you that they're not pretty, but they're real and they are dismal. My mum uh, was admitted to hospital in, at the end of July 2013 with an acute UTI, uh, with delirium and with some um, psychotic symptoms. The first instance that I'm going to relate to you occurred um, sort of in the mid-autumn. So by that time, she was receiving therapeutic medication for her psychiatric system, symptoms. She was um, much more stable, and, um, but she was having repeated UTIs. She was being cared for in a large um, geriatric ward where there was patients with all sorts of um, medical conditions. Um, uh, at this point, though, she was in um, a single room within that wider uh, uh, general geriatric <coughs> ward. Um, I had an arrangement with the head of nursing that I could visit her every morning. It worked for me to do it that way, to come in and visit her for a couple of hours in the morning. I was fresh, she was at her best, and not only could I visit with her, I could also engage in some cognitive stimulation to try and um, regain some of the functioning she had lost through delirium. Excuse me, this particular morning I arrived in. Mum was great at that point, you know, really interacting. And, and um, Anyway, this particular morning I arrived in. It must have been between 10 or 11. That's the time I usually came in. And I found my mum uh, in a chair beside her bed with her knuckles on the floor, and she was completely slumped over. Um, her mouth was open, and she was drooling. And she said to me, Sabina, what's wrong? I can't talk. I can't move. I don't know what's happening to me. And she spoke like that. She was perfectly aware, but she was completely and utterly immobile and restrained. Um, I went out to the ward, and I called the nurse, and I asked her why my mother had been sedated. And she said, this was a nurse I had never seen before, she said that she was walking up and down the corridor asking to go home. The ward was a locked ward. My mother asked to go home every single day. She packed her bag every single morning. Walking up and down the corridor was good exercise. Like most people, when I heard about chemical restraints, I thought that meant sedation and that you might be lying in a relaxed state and perhaps asleep in your bed. I had no idea that it meant that you were really frightened and trapped within your own body. My mum was left in that room on her own and nobody had explained to her what was happening to her. She was very afraid and I was very angry. The next day, the head of the ward came to me and reprimanded me for the way that I spoke to her nurse. A couple of weeks later, um, I came in to visit my mum on a Saturday morning and I found her writhing in pain. She had a very bad pain in her tummy. <coughs> I went to the nurse and I asked the nurse, um, could mum have some painkillers? And the nurse told me that she'd already given my mum paracetamol with her breakfast and she was not authorised to give her any more painkillers. To cut a very long day, very short, and a very long, painful and distressing day for my mum, Eleven hours eight later, a doctor arrived to give my mum some more painkillers. How can a nurse chemically restrain my mum in one instance and not relieve her pain in another? There's something radically wrong. Um, 
In December 2013, my mum was transferred to a private hospital slash nursing home. Um, this photo is from the summer of 2014 at a launch of an Alzheimer's Society new videos. I took my mum out at weekends into my own home. Um, uh, I'm going to sort of move on very quickly to last August when my mum became acutely ill and had to be transferred to the same acute hospital. Um, I went with her in the ambulance. Um, she didn't want to go into the hospital, but she had to because she would need um, intravenous antibiotics. Um, uh, while she was being with, admitted towards the end of the second day, you know, when we were in that demi space between um, A and E and admittance, um, I could see that she was starting to get a bit delirious again. She was starting to get a bit high, and I could see some of the psychotic behaviour starting to come in. So she was admitted that night. The next morning, I rang the hospital ward. To, it was a different ward, to say to the ward manager, look, I think my mom is going to have, you know, certain behaviours. Please don't sedate her. I live and work 10 minutes away. Um, please call me and I can come in and help manage her behaviours. The response that the nurse manager gave to me was that he runs a very busy ward. He is respons his responsibility was to keep my mother fed, hydrated and medicated. And anything beyond that was not his responsibility. He was very busy. If I wanted to speak to him, I could come in and see him at 2 o'clock, which I did with my son to find my mother fully sedated in her bed. I couldn't communicate with her. The next morning, I rang to see how she had been and how her night was. Another nurse answered the phone and said that my mother had a difficult night. She kept trying to get out of bed. Um, and so he was just about to administer sedation to her on that Saturday morning. I knew a little bit more at that point in time. I asked him for the medical reason for his sedation. He had no answer other than to say he was understaffed and she really needed a special to a care assistant to stop her getting out of bed and he didn't have one. I asked him, would he sedate a seven-year-old who kept trying to get out of bed? He didn't respond respond. I asked him to hold off on a sedation. It would take me 20 minutes to get there. When I got there, magically, there was a special looking after my mum. Somehow he managed to magic one. So it's possible if you ask for it. The final incident that I'm going to tell you about occurred last December um, when I was visiting my mum. She was back. She made a wonderful recovery. Um, and she was back living in the nursing home. However, she was much more frail and she was no longer able to walk and take herself to the bathroom. She needed uh, two people to lift her onto the bathroom and we were told that we were not allowed to do that for insurance reasons. So I was visiting with my mum in one of the sitting rooms with my son and my mum articulated a need. My mum was fully, fully continent and fully aware when she needed to go to the bathroom. She said to me, Sabina, I need to go to the bathroom. I have a pain in my tummy, meaning she needed to pass motion. I sent my son down to the main sitting room to get the care assistants to come and bring her to the bathroom. And he came back to me and said, she said she'll be down in 15 minutes. And like a true mother, I blamed my son. And I said, did you not tell her that your nana wants to go to the toilet now? And he said, I did. Um, my mum became more distressed. She started to say to me, I don't want to soil the chair. I don't want to. So I felt her and she was in incontinence wear, even though she was not incontinent. So I reassured her and I said, don't worry, mum, you won't destroy the sofa, as she thought. But in reality, it was a plastic wheelie chair. Um, I said, don't worry, you're OK. She soiled herself and became extremely distressed. I wheeled her down to the um, care room and I said to the care assistant, my mum has soiled herself, can you please change her? And she said to me, I told your son I will do it in 15 minutes. My mum was paying for the privilege of this treatment. At this point, this was beyond a human rights violation. My mum had fissures, she had piles and she had cracks and she was sitting in her own faeces. The care assistant told me that she could not bring my mother to change her because there was two care assistants on looking after 20 patients and they couldn't leave those 20 patients to bring my kids to the my mum to the bathroom. They told me if I had a problem with it I should complain to the management. I told them if they couldn't carry out their duty of care they should complain to the management and make them aware that they needed more staff. 
the nurse came back, well, one of the care assistants ran off to get the nurse who was on a break um, nearby. She immediately apologised and said that this is a human rights violation, which indeed it was. Um, uh, my mum passed away on Valentine's Day. Um, today is my first birthday without her. Um, I hope that she forgives me for sharing these intimate details. I hope that she understands that the reason I'm doing it is to make the future better for my children because I don't want them to have to live through this with me. Um, my father died suddenly. I hope that the final gift that I can give to my children is my sudden death. Um, if that is not to be the case, I hope that we can influence policy and practice and that we can change this because I know any time I speak to people there are this isn't an only story this isn't a, you know an isolated incident this happens again and again and again and this is Ireland in 2016 if we keep hiding people away in the outskirts, if we keep creating the leper colonies of 2016, um, it's just going to keep on going. We have to shout out, we have to speak out. And I'm sorry, Mum, I hope you don't mind. Thank you.